They're lying to you. And that makes us so mad. Welcome to the channel, I'm Liz. And I'm Paul, and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And we are pushing through fear right now, aren't we, a little bit? Because we're a little mad because of some rumors out there that we have found not to be true. Not so much fear as, as anger at the, at the people that are kind of putting out a false message, what the campground situation is out here. And we're hearing from the A-team, we're hearing from you saying, well, guess I'm not gonna camp this year. Guess I'm not gonna bother buying an RV because all the campgrounds are full. Now, campgrounds are busier than they were before the lockdown happened. Now they're maybe three quarters full instead of half full. Well, and some are quite empty. So we're gonna share our experience as well as a couple other people that we know that are crossing the country. So in our experience, we've been through six states. You wanna name those six states? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, and Minnesota. We went through 12 different campgrounds. There was only one that was full-ish, kind of full, and that was Hart Ranch. We actually were seeing lots of empty campgrounds. And then we have friends of ours. Hi, Norm and Kim of Mountain Beaches. They are out in the Idaho, Montana area. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think they're actually headed east towards um, Indiana and Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. They have not had a problem with campgrounds. And then there's Kathy and Larry who are crossing the country. They started in California and I think right now they're in Maine. They haven't booked out more than, much more than a week in advance. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe no more than two or three weeks and they've been able to do cross country. Yep. We stayed three miles from West Glacier at a lovely campground that was half empty most of the time. In fact, our whole area was empty. Three miles from Glacier in the month of June. Yeah, right on a lake. Yeah, so yep. we know that there are some places that are not going to be empty ever, Florida Keys in the winter. So we're gonna have some tips for you so that you can get into some campgrounds. The first tip is don't trust the websites. If you go on the website and it says it's booked, call the park directly. They yeah. may be able to work you in. Yeah. Sometimes they don't keep their website up to date. And then of course there's cancellations, last minute cancellations. So, you know, there's a good chance that you can get in even if the website is saying that you can't, that it's full. They may know something that the website doesn't. And if your first choice or even your second choice is, is uh, full, then just keep looking. I mean, there's not just one campground in an area usually. It's rare to see just one campground to cover a, a, an area, especially an area where a lot of people go, like West Glacier or like, like Glacier National Park. There's, I, I don't even know how many campgrounds there are there, but there's a ton of them. Even West Glacier, backing up for a second, our first choice was going to be the KOA just outside of the uh, West Gate. And it was booked. When we called, they said, no, you, you're not getting in here. And, but the trick is don't give up. Just right. call the next, par the next park. And I think where we stayed was our third phone call. If you find that you're in a really hot area, maybe it's, you know, an area in Maine or, or wherever it is or, or West Glacier and you can't find a place, you could do like some folks that we met at Devil's Tower did. They camped like what they were miles away. So mm -hmm. you could look maybe 40 minutes away mm -hmm. and then, OK, I've got a longer drive in, but at least I can still see those sites that I want to see. Right. And we have filled gaps, too. We couldn't get into Hart Ranch when we wanted to, so we stayed at a park not too far away. An Camp hour away at campground. And, yeah, yeah, campground about an hour away. And Which then, was empty. Yeah, <laughs> and, then we, and then we moved to Hart Ranch when the dates became available. If you can be flexible on dates, that's a great tip. And we have found that campgrounds that do fill up are almost always empty during the week. So if mm -hmm. you're planning a two or three week vacation, if you can move your dates so that you're not at the hot spots during the weekends, it's going to serve you better because the tourist attractions you visit will be less crowded as well. And that's important for some place like, like West Glacier, like Glacier National Park. That place was, was buzzing on the weekends. I mean, you could, you could barely find a place to park. If you could, if you could drive in, of course, that was another issue with, the, with this new pass system that they've got. Well, that leads to another tip, too. If you can't find any place on weekends, think of rest stops, Cabela's, 
Walmart, that sort of thing to stay free just because, you know, the weekends are probably not the best time to see our national parks. Yeah. And I understand that Cabela's has made a decision, corporate decision, to no, no longer allow overnight camping. Uh, we haven't tried it since we heard that, so I don't know what the situation is there. Um, There's other places there too. There are other places. I would not be surprised based on how Walmart has been looking lately if they don't shut it down too. But there are other places to stop. One of the tips I can share about that is go to a town and just ask you know, somebody who lives there, where's a good place to park overnight? That happened to me. I said, where do I go? And they said, well, the Kmart over here is closed and everybody parks there. So right. yeah, you ask around, you'll find a place just for overnight. Yes, where I'm from in Southern California, there's almost no place to park legally, um, but people do it still. Other places to think about, you know, as far as, you know, not traditional campgrounds are Corps of Engineer campgrounds. They tend to be rustic campgrounds. They tend to not fill. Right now, we are in a state park that is in a primitive campground. Mm -hmm. So we do not have electric or water. Or sewer. Well, <laughs> and, and there's, you know, we're, we're not full. Now, the electric side on the other loop, that's not full either, though. No, it's not. Yeah. The, yesterday when we walked over there, there were... I don't know, half a dozen spaces open? Open, yeah. So that's another tip. If you can't get a full service site, think about doing a primitive site if you have a generator or if the weather's nice enough that you just don't need to run your air conditioning. Right. Freecampsites.net is a website that you should know about if you don't already know about it. It will help you find spots that, that people have camped at before and, and been successful at it. I stayed at a campground that had gone out of business in Nebraska and the city bought the campground but hadn't started working on it yet and the grass was taller than the picnic table but it was okay to camp there. There are a lot of apps out there in finding campgrounds. We like using RV Parky. We put in the city that we want to go to, we put in the destination and then we look around and see all the campgrounds. You can tell it what you want to see if you want to see Walmarts or Cracker Barrels or you name it. You can actually tell the app that and, and it'll show up. If you don't want to see those, you can tell it you don't want to see them and they won't show up. And then it will also tell you if the campgrounds have Wi-Fi, if they're big rig friendly, which is something that we need, that sort of thing. So definitely check that out. So why do you think there's videos on YouTube talking about how, how the campgrounds are all full? Why do you think they're doing that? You know, I, I don't know exactly, but I have my theories. And the number one theory I think is that they're trying to sell videos or they're trying to get viewers, right? By yeah. fear. Yeah, drama sells on YouTube. So yeah, I mean, that, that might be a big part of the... I think they're trying to scare people. I think they're saying, hey, you know, all these RVs have been sold, so there's no room out there. Great. I mean, that's the bottom line is that you yeah. can still get them. You can still get campgrounds. It's not just our experience, it's all these people that we're meeting that are right. crossing the country with us or right. that have come from down south or up north. Another possible theory is that maybe they just are they're selfish and they don't want crowded campgrounds. So they're, they're putting, the, putting the news out there that they're full so you don't even try to come out. Exactly, they have an agenda. And in fact, there are a couple people that are YouTubers that actually bought a campground, right? There's a couple different campgrounds that were bought recently. And I think if you bought a campground and you want to make sure people come, you just say, well, all the campgrounds are full, so come to mine. Yeah. So tell us in the comments section uh, what your experiences are with the campgrounds. Are you having trouble booking? Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. And we will see you in the next video. Oh, no room. No room. Mm -mm. Bed's full. No room. That's okay. I can find other sleeping arrangements. <laughs>